I don't actually know what to call the effect I'll be showing you how to create in this tutorial, but it's the kind of futuristic text style you might see on old VHS tapes, old sci-fi movie titles, or maybe even classic sports or tech brand logos. The best name I can come up with is futuristic lines, gradient lines, speed lines, or futuristic gradient speed lines. The process of creating this effect is quite simple, but it includes some must-know techniques that can be applied to all kinds of projects in Illustrator. I'll first show you how to permanently apply the effect to some text, but stick around to see an alternative method that keeps the text editable. To create this futuristic gradient speed lines text effect, we first need some text to apply it to. I'm using a strong wide font named Eurosteel Black Italic. You can activate it from the Adobe Fonts Library using the link in the description. Use the Line tool to draw a line above the text. Hold Shift to keep it perfectly straight. Activate the stroke in the toolbar, then click a black swatch to give the line a black stroke. Switch back to the move tool, then hold the alt key and drag to make a duplicate of the line. Hold shift to move this second path straight down to position it halfway down the text. Click the first line again, then alter its stroke weight to fatten it up. 5 points works for the scale of my document. Hold shift and click the other line to add both to the selection, then go to object, blend and make. Head straight back to Object Blend and Blend Options, and configure the settings to specified steps, then alter the number to an appropriate value. 10 copies spaces the lines out neatly in my example. The Blend tool automatically creates a gradual transition between the first and last object, so in this case the stroke decreases from 5 to 1 point. To apply this blend to the text, it first needs expanding to permanently apply the effect. Go to Object and Expand. Now the object has been expanded, the strokes need converting to outlines, so go to Object and Expand a second time. The text also needs converting to ensure everything plays nicely together when the two objects are combined with the Pathfinder tool. Select the text element, then right click and choose Create Outlines. Just like expanding the stroke, this converts the text into shapes. Because the text is now made up of individual letters, it needs converting to a compound path, so it can be treated as one object. Right click and choose Ungroup, then go to Object, Compound Path and Make. Hold the Shift key and add the lines to the selection, then click the Subtract button in the Pathfinder panel to punch out the lines from the text. If you turn on Outline Mode from the View menu, you can see this effect has been permanently applied by changing the outline of the paths. While this is good for creating clean vector artwork that is suitable for logos, it means the text or the effect can no longer be edited or modified. Here's an alternative approach that makes use of some other Illustrator features that retains the live text and preserves the blend element. Create the text again along with the two lines that create the start and end of the blend effect. Apply a 5 point stroke to the top one and leave the bottom one at 1 point so the blend will transition between them. Apply the blend, then configure the blend options to specified steps. This time, instead of converting the blend and text to outlines, with the blend element selected, go to Edit and Cut. Select the text element, then in the transparency panel click Make Mask. If the text totally disappears, turn off the clip option. Click the square on the right, which is the thumbnail for the mask we've just created. Activating it will mean anything we create will form part of the mask. Go to Edit and Paste in front to put the blend lines back in place, but inside the mask. Click the left square thumbnail in the transparency panel to exit out of the mask, and back to the regular artwork. The blend lines that were pasted in the mask are now effectively erasing the text, but because a mask is being used rather than the Pathfinder, it's doing it non-destructively. You can still change the colour of the text and the lines will still allow the background to show through. Draw a rectangle to cover the text and give it a black fill. Right click and choose centre back for it to act as a black background against the white text. If you turn on outline mode this time, you'll see the lines haven't actually been punched out of the text, nor is the text outlined into shapes. This means you can still edit the wording just like any other regular text element, but the mask still applies the gradient lines effect. Because the blend element is still live too, you can enter back into the mask in the transparency panel and adjust the blend settings. Alter the spacing in the blend options, or use the direct selection tool to alter the stroke weight of either line in the blend. Don't forget to click out of the mask mode in the transparency panel to continue editing as normal. 
The final result is a simple text effect with somewhat of a futuristic style, but the processes used can be adapted to create all kinds of different effects. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.